club enforcer Daniel Williams and local president Rodney Partington. These were the men the Banditos were counting on to protect their territory in the Hunter Valley. Williams was generally considered the most dangerous. He had a taste for violence and the escalating feud created the perfect conditions for him to rise through the ranks. He'd pull out his gun at the slightest provocation. Mate, shut the fuck up! That created even more tension among the gangs. But when Williams threatened their children, he crossed the line. There's a rule among traditional bikies that families are off limits. Repercussions were inevitable, and they arrived at his home in a blaze of gunfire. A number of fairly big burly characters jumped out of a uh, four-wheel drive, uh, all looked of uh, bikey appearance. Uh, one of them had a pistol, another a rifle, and a, uh, a third one we believe had a shotgun. There was bullet holes that didn't only just strike the front wall, they travelled throughout the house. At least one of those projectiles had also struck a van that was parked alongside the house and uh, had travelled through that van. The van belonged to an electrician who had been hired by Williams to install a security system. Somehow, he escaped uninjured. According to police, Inside the house, Williams was cowering. Like anyone, I suppose, in that situation, he hit the, the deck very quickly. Uh, I think if Daniel could have, he'd have uh, dug a hole through the bottom of the floorboards with his hand to get down lower. <laughs> when we arrived, he was uh, shaking almost uncontrollably. He didn't uh, fully comprehend what had gone on. I noticed that he'd actually pissed himself. I'll tell you what, um, you know, the bikies don't often like a, uh, a police presence around them, but uh, I think the police pulling up that day were a little bit like the cavalry uh, arriving for Custer. It didn't take Williams long to pick himself up, wipe himself down and get back out on the street. He was out of control. Up now. Like old time, though. When a drug dealer owed the gang money, Williams meted out a cruel and brutal punishment. He was tied up and uh, tortured over a number of uh, hours. Give me money, mate. You got piece of shit. Fucking leave this dog here. You're going to die in this room. We'll be back very soon. One stage there, he was uh, actually wrapped up in glad wrap and, uh, and thrown onto the floor and kept there until he was able to uh, make good his escape a little bit later on. For hours, the dealer worked to set himself free. But the Hunter Valley isn't a big place. And the banditos play a mean game of hide-and-seek. Terrified, the dealer managed to hide for a few weeks. But bikies have long memories. Eventually, his luck ran out. When his tormentors caught up with him again, they were in no mood for mucking around. You be a good girl. Don't call the cops. They've managed to take hold of uh, this fellow again. And I think he realised at this point that he was going back and it was all about to start again. If not, uh, it probably would have got worse. Get the car. Get the car. Get the car. 
He resisted them, and, uh, and that's when they decided to take out the rubber mallet. This fellow was then smashed in the face a number of times uh, in the middle of a uh, public street with this rubber mallet. That happened in uh, broad daylight in the middle of a public street in Curry Curry. We actually got the initial reports from uh, a number of passing motorists that were uh, witnessing what was occurring. Again, as, uh, as brazen as you like, uh, out in the public. Williams was sent to jail for kidnapping and assault. But the banditos weren't done. Not by a long shot. Their president, Rodney Partington, had a plan. And it was bigger and more spectacular than anything that had gone before. It was March 2001 and the Hunter Valley Turf Wars had been raging for months. Rodney Partington decided it was time to do something about all the attacks on his members. Late one night, Partington crept into the Gypsy Joker's compound, clutching a homemade bomb. Well, he's gone there at a time when he believed that there was no one around. Uh, as it turned out, he was right. It was a very dark area. It's an industrial area right out on the edge of town, surrounded by scrub. Um, he's gone in there at night to uh, plant this device to set it up and then leave before anything has happened and uh, just simply sit back uh, somewhere else uh, and hear on the news when uh, some members of the Gypsy Jokers have arrived and opened that door. It was fairly clear in our minds that he was planning a bomb to take out one or more members of the Gypsy Jokers when they arrived at the clubhouse. The device has gone off literally in his face and uh, that has killed him immediately. With Partington dead and Daniel Williams in jail, local sergeant at arms Ian Melder moved away from the area to set up another clubhouse further up the coast. Quiet returned to the hunter. The focus was to shift squarely back onto the banditos in Sydney. Next on Gangs of Oz a traitor in their midst. Stephanie Roman reveals what really happened the night her bandito lover was killed. I wanted to tell Hooks when he got back. I wanted to tell him, I wanted to warn him, just to watch out for him. 